my name is Kate. I've been the Senior Supervisor of Cultural Affairs and the Director of the Art Center for 22 years now. And the reason I'm here this long is that this city and this art center are to die for. Oh, yeah. As citizens, I know you know the beauty of living in Huntington Beach. As an employee, you come from heart. Long Beach uh, and other parts of both California and the East Coast. This was a surprise. I wasn't even sure it was an art center when I came to apply for my job. I couldn't find my way in the door and started knocking on every door I could find around the outside of the art center until somebody let me in. The art center has been here for 29 years. And we're very proud of it. And one of the main reasons we're so proud is that the Art Center was founded by partnership. Partnership of City Council, City Hall, and citizens who decided that we needed, forgive me here, we needed more than sand between your toes to enjoy the true beauty of Huntington Beach. So we're in a perfect location. We have this gorgeous beach down the street two miles. And at this end, we have a cultural arena that gives people a place to walk up and spend a few minutes enjoying the art that most of our locals participate in and provide as exhibitions. The Art Center is partnership with a foundation, the Huntington Beach Art Center Foundation, was the financial approach that allowed this to be uh, built to begin with. So it's a work of passion. It's work from the heart. And it combined the energy, the efforts, and the finances, even down to $100 donations. And we honor those people on the walls inside the Art Center. Without City Council's forward-looking vision, this couldn't have happened. They purchased this building for $780,000 from Southern California Edison. Then the foundation went to work with galas, with parties, with curated events that were not part of a finished building yet, really rough and tough. They raised $2.1 million to renovate, redecorate, repurpose an old building. I'm proud of that. Repurpose an old building. If you have a moment tonight, I'd like you to walk through the galleries Last Saturday night, we opened our latest show. It's called Art Reclaimed. Everything is made from something else. And how many times it's been made and remade, we can't tell you. The artists came from Central um, and Southern California, none of them seeking fame or exhibitions. And they went to work to make new work for this show on an individual basis and came together under the auspices of a curator named Brian Hall, who was formerly an employee here. He left last year to start his own art practice or to grow his practice. And he came back at our request to curate this show. Everything here is made from something else. And you'll be stunned to find out what those something else's were. So I'm not gonna tell you, I don't wanna give it away. I want you to discover this for yourself. Some of it will compel you, some of it will make you laugh, some of it is just amazing, just amazing. Our whole exhibition concept for this year has been based on climate change and the impact of that. Our last show was gloomy. This show is joyful. You'll see color, light, chandeliers, hanging things that you have to look at the labels and find out how they're made. It will be a really wonderful experience that will have you leave with a smile on your face and want to come back another time. That's our goal, bring in the community, come back another time. And for that reason, I'm delighted to have Mayor Strickland here tonight. <laughs> Beach and everything else he does to magically reach out to this community. Thanks. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's give Kate a big round of applause. <clears throat> Kate.
thank you for all your hard work uh, for the people of Huntington Beach and open up this beautiful art center that uh, really improves the lives of people here in Huntington Beach. Um, I think we should, you know, think about a spotlight award. I've been doing these mayor spotlight awards to spotlight people like you who make Huntington Beach a better place. Let's give her another round of applause. Thank you so much. You can tell, you can tell right away from your heart, you love what you do. And if all of us love what we do like you, uh, we'd all be extremely very happy. Um, I want to thank all of you for taking time to be here this evening. There's a lot of things that you could be doing with your time. Um, the, it's the most valuable commodity you have. And I really appreciate you taking time to hear from me. But, you know, I do these things not for me to give the longest speeches, uh, but I think what makes uh, me a better councilman, mayor, um, is ever since I got elected a long time ago, those of you who don't know my background, I did serve in the legislature. Uh, I got elected at a young age when I was 27, State Assembly. And one of the biggest complaints I hear from uh, constituents is you only see your elected officials around election time. And that's one thing you'll never be able to, we can agree to disagree without being disagreeable, but you'll never tell me that I'm not out in the community. Um, I think the best legislators, the best council members are ones that are in the community, that take voices from people in the community, take those voices with them to City Hall. I think it's more important for elected officials like myself to be good listeners rather than talkers. And so I've made a very, uh, when I was fortunate enough to become mayor, I made it a big part of what I do. Uh, this morning I had a community coffee. For those who can't get here in the evening, I was there in the morning. And I do, uh, the, the law enforcement breaks out the city in five regions. I do a, a, one of these town halls in each one of the regions every quarter, and I do that the same in terms of community coffees. So with that, I want to thank you for being here. But before I move forward, uh, I want to introduce our mayor pro tem, my partner in crime, Gracie Vandermark. And I was told to highlight her shoes. I don't notice things like that, but I was told to highlight her shoes. It matches her prickly dress with the, with the cactus on it. Um, she's, uh, Gracie's done a remarkable job uh, representing the people of Huntington Beach. And then I want to introduce you know, kind of someone who's a mentor, someone who um, is the best city attorney in the country, uh, who really, Huntington Beach is in his heart, because he can go out, and, and his wife's gonna kill me, but he can make so much money in the private sector on the talent that he has as an attorney. But he stays here as a city attorney for Huntington Beach, because he loves Huntington Beach. And no one fights harder for Huntington Beach than Michael Gates. And, and um, you know, so, um, I'm just very, very uh, honored to be here. Um, I'm honored to be your uh, mayor. Um, really, I don't have a long speech. All I gotta say is, uh, I'm very proud of the first seven months that we've had in City Hall. Just a couple of highlights. Uh, we, when we campaigned, there was four of us that campaigned together. We had a, a contract with Huntington Beach. We fulfilled that contract. Uh, we're moving forward on, on, on fulfilling that contract with Huntington Beach. We said we're gonna to try to cut red tape and roll red carpet for business. We've done that. We've passed already items that make it better for business. We're out in the business community. I've now had three people in downtown talking to me and Gracie with literally tears in their eyes saying that we saved their business by opening up Main Street and again, uh, pedestrians walking down Main Street and thanking us for the dramatic drop in homelessness downtown. Um, so, very proud of that. We worked hard and we got a, a contract done with our law enforcement. We were down 30 law enforcement officers uh, because of what they call lateral moves of people from Huntington Beach going to Irvine, Seal Beach, the county. We've stopped the bleeding. Now they're starting to come back here. And the most essential role of government is public safety. And it is a top priority for uh, the majority of the council. And we've made public safety a top priority. And I'm happy to say that we work hand in hand with Chief Para. I think Chief Parra does a remarkable job for the city of Huntington Beach. And we get 13 million visitors a year. If they come here and they're not safe, they're not coming back. Um, so the key for us is to make sure the city is safe and you feel comfortable with your families going throughout any part of Huntington Beach. And we believe we're going in the right direction in terms of public safety. And then, um, you know, uh, look, I know it's been getting a lot of media attention. Uh, for those of you who have been in Southern California a long time, you'll know what I'm talking about. I always quote Cal Worthington, I'll stand on my head till my ears are red, 
to keep the air show here in, in Huntington Beach. And we kept the air show here in Huntington Beach. I mean, the air show, if you look at the economic studies and people who are the top people who do economic studies, uh, they talk about this is the largest air show in the country. It provides $70.4 million to our uh, direct economy, $120 million overall economy. And one of the stats I liked in, the, in, in that study says of the 564,000 people that come from outside of Huntington Beach that come to Huntington Beach for the air show, 91% of them come back to Huntington Beach for something else. And so if you really want to see a budget hole, let's not have the air show. Anybody who is against this air show, I just don't understand because at the end of the day, that provides so much economic development. To put in perspective, when you talk about those big numbers, that's almost the equivalent of a Final Four, the NCAA Final Four, is that's the kind of revenue that comes to Huntington Beach. Again, it's the largest air show in the, in, in the country. So um, very proud of our, our business, uh, public safety, bringing in economic development. Um, one of the other things that we're looking down the future, uh, we have, uh, we're working with the state right now on a feasibility study to take over PCH. Uh, if you go to Newport Beach, they have control over PCH instead of the state, and you see it's beautified on PCH, and you kind of know when you're coming to Huntington Beach because the state doesn't really do their job at making sure that that, that portion in Huntington Beach is taken care of. So we're looking at a feasibility study to take over PCH and beautify PCH, and also do that at public-private partnership and getting a lot of the private enterprise, uh, the people in the hotels, to also invest in, along with the city to invest to beautify uh, PCH uh, all the way through uh, Huntington Beach. And so those are some of the things we're working on. Uh, but with that, again, I say the best is I'm here to listen and I'm here to answer any questions you might have. Those are the overview that I have. Gracie, do you want to say anything? Did, did I miss anything? Nope, you got it all. Michael Gates, did I miss anything? Nope, you did oh. a great job. <laughs> Tony, uh, so I've been on uh, at the dais for nine years. I've been in office since 2014. Tony is hands down the best mayor that I've ever served with. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're saying that because no other mayors are here. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, no, I, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right. Uh, again, I, I'm here to answer your questions. Um, go ahead. I forgot to ask you this question this morning. Um, I've been hearing on the air show that they are, in the past, they've had a section blocked up, fenced in for people to buy tickets. I've been hearing that they're going to block off the entire beach. Is that true? Uh, that's not my understanding. It, it, their show is going to be run. Their show's yeah. Their show. Yeah. It's going to be like it's done in the past. Yeah. Um, just the section yeah. Okay. yeah. I just, I had to ask. And again, um, when we talk about economic development on their show, uh, I encourage every one of you to call the Waterfront Hilton and ask for a hotel room between September 29th and October 1st. It's $3,600 a night. And we get the TOT from that. So think about, think about that, that revenue. With, and they're sold out. Uh, it's hard to get. Um, the reason why they can charge that is because people will pay it. So we'll just go up on a group. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, no, and, and that's the other thing. It's, it's hard to monetize, something you could look up in the air, but that's why we have festivities around it. There's going to be a concert ar ar around the air show, hopefully, and we can get some good talent to bring in uh, some more revenue when it comes to that for the city. Questions? Go ahead. Go to the mic. Please, Amory. Thank you, Mr. Amory Hansen. I wanted to ask about the uh, Pacific Coast Highway thing. I think it's a good idea. I'm an advocate for local control. But I wanted to um, see if uh, it would involve at all um, taking away some of the coastline on the beach side. That concerns me. I know Jill Hardy, one of our former mayors, uh, very much well regard the fact that from Brooker Street to uh, Warner Avenue, you can see the beach all the way along. So yeah. I wanted to ask about that. Yeah, no, uh, we're going to make sure we have the beautification of, that you can see the beach and the ocean, no question. And I'm sure when we get down to that path, mm -hmm. we're going to have community involvement in exactly uh, what that beautification looks like. And we'll have interaction with uh, our constituents to make sure yeah. that it's something that everybody really wants to see. Oh, I think that's great. Thank you. Thanks, Amory. Thank you. Um, 
I just wanted to say I concur with Gates here that by far, since I've been here in 1998, it's amazing what you guys have done in just this short amount of time. Thank you. Um, my kids are teenagers and they grew up here and just going to downtown was very unsafe. And we go in the morning from about seven to nine and we've been yelled at, attacked, and the former council members just, I don't know, they didn't seem to care. Um, the homeless people, I talk to them often. They're usually oftentimes sober in the morning and, um, well, it seemed to be, at least they could carry on a conversation and I would have conversations with them, but uh, the policies were comfortable for them here. That's why they came. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all you had to do, I have family in downtown Seal that didn't tolerate this stuff. So all I have to say is thank you, thank you, thank you. It's very okay. different, like that. You can tell something's changed. Yeah, thank um, you. But my question is, um, going forward, I'm super concerned about um, elections and mm -hmm. what can we do as a community to come alongside you guys to make sure that those three are out. We don't get three like them to destroy the city that they're doing pretty quickly. And we know everything will just be like it was before. So what can we do? Not be, not, not be complacent. So uh, what the, does that mean? Well, that means, um, and, and it, I, if you voted for me, thank you. If you didn't, I represent everybody. but. The, the key is, uh, if you deeply care and you like the direction that we're headed in terms of the majority, our majority is going to get behind some candidates that we believe in, that we believe that will follow, um, not follow us, but have the same kind of philosophy. Same philosophy in terms of cutting the you know, red tape, rolling out red carpet for business. Same kind of philosophy that wants to be out here in the community, listen from you, not just wait for you to come to City Hall. The kind of philosophy that believes in what do we need to sit down with business owners, what do we need to do to bring business here? What do we need to do to make business flourish here for the people who are here? What do we need to do to keep our quality of life? What do we need to do to make sure this doesn't turn into an urban center? Um, a lot of times, you know, I didn't talk about the, the, I didn't talk about the lawsuit that our great city attorney is doing, but he couldn't do it without a majority of the council. And the last council wouldn't give him that authority. I think that's fundamental. Like right here, we love this community because it's a suburban coastal community. What's been forced down from the state, they want to urbanize us. They want 50 high rise, high density buildings. And, and quite frankly, they'll, they'll try to force that without state revenue that we would need in terms of police, fire, roads, and everything else. They, it's an unfunded mandate. And I believe this fight is absolutely fundamental. So you'll see us get behind candidates who we believe have those same kind of core values. Every person's different. Gracie's different than me. That's what makes kind of all four of us. Like we all, we're like a family now because we did 110 events together during the campaign. Um, but we're, we all have different strengths and we all trust each other in different ways. So you don't get the same with Pat Burns as you do Tony Strickland, Gracie or Casey, but we're gonna get behind candidates who have that same kind of fundamental values. Uh, and we're going to campaign with them. So if you like what the majority is doing right now, please, um, you know, hear what we have to say in terms of the candidates that are coming forward. Now, this is a city event. I can't talk about those candidates right now, but you'll see us come out uh, for, for candidates in the future that we believe that will keep the momentum going of all, of all we believe got the city back on the right track. questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, I've been a resident for more than 40 years and I had a period of my life when I was at the city council all the time. And we always had to identify ourselves. Actually, we had to say our address. Mm -hmm. So you knew the person was from Huntington Beach. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned about the fact that uh, we have people that are getting on Facebook and Twitter and calling people from Amita mm -hmm. and Arcadia and they come in passionately and talk about our city, mm -hmm. how to run it, mm -hmm. what are the priorities, and I don't, I don't think that's right. So I am wondering if the form that we fill out to speak contains a box to check or whatever so that uh, it is obvious that the person speaking is a citizen, voter, homeowner, has skin in the game mm -hmm. to, to uh, govern this city. And it's not somebody who just has a passionate opinion. I would, and you are the attorney, so you could say if this is okay. I would even say, let's have the citizens speak first, mm -hmm. so that you guys aren't here until you know 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. talking 
with people who don't even live here. And then uh, if there isn't uh, more time, then the people who are passionate and want to say something will email, write a letter. But mm -hmm. you're not in this city, and we have the right to govern ourselves. Mm -hmm. If you didn't vote for anybody, then you can't, you know, say, oh, what is it, the Brown Act or something, whatever act it is that I get to talk. Maybe not. Go mm -hmm. talk at your city. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's number one. Oh, wait, let me answer number one before you go to number two. Uh, number one, uh, I was on top of that right away. I asked the city attorney early on, uh, and the city attorney informed me I could not limit it to just Huntington Beach residents or even force them to say if they're not from Huntington Beach that they're from another city. So we can't, we, can't even, we can't even do that. I asked that question early on, early on, and I got that answer. So that's just, that's just where it is. I thought that Newport Beach does require the person to say I'm a resident of the, of the, of the city. They might not have as good a city attorney as we do. <laughs> you know, I'm just... I, I'm just saying, wow. you know, uh, when you talk to different attorneys, they give you different opinions yeah. based on the law. Yeah. But I do trust that this city attorney no. uh, has our best interest at, at heart at all times. No, but uh, uh, that's your number one. That's, yeah, that's your number one. I, I, was, I was right where you were, uh, especially with some of the controversial issues we've had. And I know there was call to action oh, yeah. from people in L.A. and all over coming in. Um, I had the same reaction you did, but I, I got advice of counsel, so it is advice of counsel. So it's not illegal. It's not illegal for the mayor or the city to ask residency, um, but the speaker doesn't have to say. So we can ask, but they don't have to answer. So you'd be taking yeah. time each time to say, "Are you a resident of Huntington Beach?" And they don't have to answer. Oh wow! And in fact, when you hear my mayor, I, I say you you. We would like you to identify yourselves, although you don't have to. Uh, you, you hear me, before the speakers come up, you hear me uh, do this long statement every time, and that's in that statement. Wow, okay, sorry to hear that. Oh, so number two. Okay, number two is the makeup of the infrastructure group as you're putting mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's kind of weird. Uh, they lost my application, and then he, he did it over the phone. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, Alvin, I guess, mm -hmm. and he said, uh, are you appointed by Gracie? And I said, no, because Casey had talked to me about it. Mm -hmm. I was waiting for him to say, go through the list and mm -hmm. find out who, appoint, uh, you know, who asked me to serve. And he never did. So then I noticed that on your list, I'm in a general category. And then there's a, an appointed category. Mm -hmm. I'm just concerned that the group stays a 60-45. Mm -hmm. Because there should be 60 people that, you know, Right. are appointed by you guys mm -hmm. and 45 by them. If we have these two lists, appointed, general, how do we know that let, that number is not going to change? Let me look into that because you're exactly right. Let me look into that. I didn't know that. In fact, I know I have one or two appointments still left, yeah. uh, but I did give a couple of my appointments to Pat because Pat had a little bit more of the people he wanted to appoint. Mm -hmm. So we do have one or two still left. Uh, 15 in but, the but, but let me find out about the general versus the appointment. Um, I, that's the first time I've heard of that. Okay. Okay. I have a, a kind of a, a curious question. Uh, I live in Huntington Beach. Mm -hmm. um, I've been trying to get a list of the books that might be restricted from the library. Mm -hmm. And there doesn't seem to be a list. Mm -hmm. But there have been books available to look at at City Hall. Um, at one time there were eight, and some of them didn't come from the library. Mm -hmm. And then there were just four, and mm -hmm. one of the four didn't come from the library. Mm -hmm. And none of them were children's books or from the children's section. Mm -hmm. When will it be possible to get a list of the books that are sparking concern? Gracie, you want to answer that? Well, the books that... Um, hey, right here. Gracie, come on. Here you go. So the books that, so I've been doing this for six years. I purchased the books myself. Um, so some of the ones, all the every book that I showed at the council meeting is in our library. Um, I know, were you one of the persons that came in to City Hall to look at books? Yes. Okay. So there was one of the books that was not available at the library. It was checked out. Right. 
um, but they do carry it. I had my own, so I brought that one so that you can see it as well. Um, every book that was on my PowerPoint or that was mentioned, I provided so you guys can come see them. So there's just four now, right? Well, there are four that I mentioned in my item. There are four that were in the PowerPoint. I have a whole library of books at home so that are in our library. I just don't have a list. Can you make a list for the citizens so we yeah. know what we're talking about? I could at some point. Right now we're working on a lot of other things. So what was asked for me is, I want a list of every book that's in your office. No, I have a lot of books in my to, office. I don't need to know the books in right. your yeah. office. And there are a lot that are controversial. Um, so I could make a list of some at some point. Um, I just haven't gotten there yet. We're super busy. We're doing a lot. And some of the books that you saw were from my personal collection. However, they are included in the library. I'm not sure what you're looking for. That's yeah. that's what I'm. What exactly are you looking for? I would like to see a list yeah. of the books that that are sparking concern. I, I'm sure. I'm sure. If you don't mind, uh, I'm sure we'll get that list. Uh, we're still formulating the 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 item to see what we what we can do when we're working with the city attorney's office in terms of here here's the goal it, it's not we're not banning books like the no, people are talking about no and, and we will get we will get that list um we're going to work through the books that were in the library in general and then specifically target the ones that were you know going after the young people and then we'll get that list of the books that were in the library that that were in that that youth because the the key here is that the parental uh that the parent the parents have um at least an understanding what's in the library and then they have a choice i i use the terminology when we were at city hall um like a, a movie like a movie um we have g rated movies pg pg 13 rated r nc 17 and i think it's important for a parent to know the material um could be and again, you, you can take your child to a rated R movie if you wanted to. Um, that isn't, that isn't my I know, issue. I know, I know that's not your issue. I'm just talking about the I'm just talking about the whole issue. As we are we talking about four books? No, we're talking about more than four books. No, there's a, there a number. There are a lot of books, and we did not review every single book. I guarantee you, there are like hundreds of books that are questionable. Yes. I've done everything I've provided is based on my own time, my own research. So I have not gone through the whole library. Um, I will go through as many as I have to at some point, but like I said, I don't have a list, and the books that were shown are from the children's section. No, what's happening to my body not. for boys? What's happening? What's happening to my body for boys? What's happening to my body for girls? Are 100% in the uh, children's section. The V word is in the youth section, teen section, for grades nine through 12. I did not provide a single book from the adult section to the people that came into City Hall to see them. Um, actually, there were no books from the children's section at City Hall. Okay. Well, the ones I provided are from the children's section. Well, the, so to answer your question, as we develop it, we will definitely put down the list of books. There. Go ahead. Just to um, piggyback onto this, first of all, I want to just thank you for this wonderful arts center. My kids are in their 30s, and they're, they're not artists, but I, they went through the classes here. I was a donor for many years. I went to programs here. This is such an amazing institution here in Huntington Beach. And it made me think, because I'm also a lover of our library. Mm -hmm. And so there are so many similarities between literature, books, and art, and what one person finds offensive another person could find life affirming. And when we talk about hundreds of books that are inappropriate, pornographic, I mean, that's a very slippery slope. And we see this all over the country, and we're seeing lawsuits and violation of First Amendment rights. Ha, ha, have you seen any of the books? I have seen some of the books. Okay. So I mean, they were cherry picked, sections were cherry picked, but there are some of these books are very helpful for some people when they're in the right location. Uh, if it's the adult section. I'll just tell you from my perspective. When when Gracie first part that brought this up, I was like, I was um, I wouldn't say apprehensive, but I was like, hmm, really, you know. Um, and then she showed me some of those books that were in the kids section, and 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 I will tell you. I will tell you, I don't think there's a person in this room 
that would think it would be appropriate for a child. However, again, I understand what you're saying. All we're trying to do is say, hey, just like you would in a movie, you as a parent need to understand this material. As Pat Burns said, very articulate uh, from the city. I thought Pat gave a great, when you see something, you can't unsee it. Um, and so really, if you have a child that you think is adult enough to see that, that is your prerogative as a parent. But me as a parent, I've had so many people call after the fact. That's why I give Gracie such a, a thank you because no matter what we do, no matter what we do with the, the, the H item that's going forward, the awareness, I've had so many parents call me thanking us for just oh, being aware some parents were absolutely shocked. Now, you're right. Different people have different re reactions to different things. You're right. right. But some parents were absolutely oh, I, shocked. I understand that just that, as there are so right. many that are signing up to get library cards that are joining friends of the library. I mean, I've never seen this kind of, uh, I mean, yeah. it's just incredible. People who just go, this can't be the case. They can't make books inaccessible for but, teens. Like, we're not, and we're, even the children's books, we're, we, we're not making, she asked this question. We're not making it inaccessible? There, there really were only a, I don't even really know. You would have to show me what was in the children's section because yeah. it's not, we have people that have been trying to figure this out based on that meeting and based on your PowerPoint and they are in young adult or adult and you were able to do the review process, which was great, our system works. Mm -hmm. And so that book, Gender Queer, was moved from the young adult to the adult section. Wow, what a great system we have in mm -hmm. place. So, I, you know, it's just, it's a frustration for many people in the city. You're mm -hmm. gonna continue to see and, that happening. And, and I will uh, say, uh, someone's frustration, we've had, uh, again, I can tell you, uh, in terms of people who have talked to me, um, so many had no idea, and when they saw the books, they said, thank you for even bringing awareness. No matter what happens moving forward with H, I'm the fact that it's aware that now more parents are gonna figure out and look at what their child, like, yeah, a lot of parents said that they used to just drop off their child right in front of the library, and that they said they're not gonna do that anymore. They're gonna walk in and make sure that the, the books they look at are appropriate. And again, parents have a different right of what their kids can see. Some people think that it's appropriate. Um, I, I have to say what I've seen of what Gracie has shown me in some of those books, I don't think there's a person in this room that would think it was appropriate for a young, young person, personally. And that's just me talking personally. I was shocked at, at a couple of those books that were in the library at the time. So next question. So I'm gonna follow up with that because my question is going to be um, more about the review process. But I just wanna say that I was one of the people who went to the library and complained about it. And just to be clear, um, my background is art and literature. And I was shocked and I was horrified and what I saw was primarily what was in the young adult section that needed to be in the adult section or sealed. Um, basically, um, it needed to be in the peep show in the, in the adult book theaters that they used to have. But again, it needed parental guidance. And a lot of people pushed back and said, and I'm a friend of the library also, a lot of people pushed back and said, well, that is parental guidance in, in, um, in the uh, YA and the teen section. But the truth is, no parents go to the library with their 13-year-old. I've never seen a parent lean over the shoulder of a 13-year-old pulling books off a shelf and saying, I don't think you should see that and why don't you see this? So we have to look at what is age appropriate. And I haven't heard anybody say we're banning books now. No. It's a review process. And yes, everybody would like to know which books, and but I, I get the feeling more that they want to do that so that they can throw books and say we're banning books. And the truth is, I think we should come together 
with a real concern about what is appropriate so that our wholesome, wonderful library can stay wholesome and wonderful, and those books that need to be in the hands of certain more sophisticated teens at their parents' discretion can still get there, but things that need to be kept out of the hands of children and teens whose parents don't want them absorbing those materials um, are somehow restricted, and I think that a lot of us feel very strongly, um, and when you say you can't unsee what you've seen, mm -hmm. you cannot. And right. so I think if you aren't getting the books at City Hall, um, at least in the teen section, you can still go to the library and get a lot of that. That's not to say that the library as a whole doesn't have a whole lot of wonderful books that mm -hmm. aren't controversial, but mm -hmm. it's just, I think, really important that we pay attention to what we're doing to our kids as they grow up in our community. I agree, and bring awareness, absolutely. Thank you. The person who just snuck in uh, over here during, is Austin Etzel. He, uh, Austin represents Senator Janet Wynn uh, here in, in the field in Huntington Beach. So down the line, if you have any state issue that you would like to talk, Austin, stand up so everybody knows who you are. Yeah. Thank, thank you, thank you for being here. So if you do have a state issue, uh, Austin's your, your point person for Senator Janet Wynn, who's doing a remarkable job for us in, in, in Huntington Beach. Other questions? Carrie Swan. I have a quick one, kind of an administrative thing. Um, so I didn't know about this town hall until Sunday. I kind of found out about it accidentally. So I sent a text to a couple of people because I have one a girlfriend who's been wanting to come to a town hall. And she said, where do I find this? It's not on the website. And it was, I got sent a screenshot of a Facebook post. So how do we, um, can we improve the process for how that information is disseminated? Um, because she couldn't come tonight. She said she wished she had known about it a week ago and she would have changed her, um, her appointment so that she could have been here. Okay, thanks Carrie. And we'll work, uh, I'll work with Jen Carrie on, we'll try to do what we can uh, to get this uh, better, lead, pr better promoted because I want people to come in, um, yeah. Please, go ahead. Real quick, and this is related to what you're talking about. You mentioned the five districts. Mm -hmm. So I gotta tell you, I, I hang with the harbor and I hang with the southeast, but I have no idea what district I'm in. So is there a place <laughs> that we can go look up our district? Yeah, no, I, I, Jen, Carrie, you know kind of the words broken out based on the law enforcement. So maybe after we're done today, you can talk to Jen. She'll tell you kind of where the five, but it, by the way, when I say that, it doesn't mean you're not invited to every one of them. You know, I'm just telling you, I could be, I could do one in Southeast. If you live in the Sunset, I still want you to come. Right, yeah, we, we had a town hall at the Harbor and there was a lot of people from not the Harbor that came. So by way of example, uh, you're invited to every one of them. The reason why I do that is try to make it easier for the constituents to come nearer to them. Um, so, any other? No, no, I appreciate that. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Any other questions? Go ahead. Yeah, how come there's three nonprofits overseeing the wetlands? I don't know the answer to that, to be honest. Do you know the history, Michael? I don't. I don't know the history of that. Go ahead. Okay. If you know. So, um, I'm not going to get into. Maybe you want to talk on the mic so other people? Because I, I, I'm interested as well. I don't know why there's All right. three. So I can't break it down real specifically, but I can tell you how these things are organized. So I think you're talking about uh, the Bolsa Chica Land Trust, Amigos de Bolsa Chica, and uh, um, the wetlands, right? Conservancy. Okay. So not one organization can do all those things. A conservancy cannot be a funding agent but a trust can be a funding agent. So uh, I worked on this in Long Beach, and then I worked on it in Huntington Beach. They're still working on it in Long Beach now. They've got a whole new area. But that's why, so you can look up those organizations, their mission statements, understand what they do, and by law they are prevented by doing the same actions. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. But we really need three. Yeah, yeah. we absolutely need three. They, they can't cross but over legally. You've got a conservancy, you've got a, a land trust, and you've got um, the, well, I know that the, um, the Amigas, they're, they're the funding, or they, they work with the government, right? And 
then the other two, one of them has that interpretive center and does tours that's and all that a, kind of stuff. That's a conservancy, but the, it's the um, it's the uh, the trust mm -hmm. that is in charge of the money. What? So it's not it's not the amigos do. And what does what does amigos do then? They advocate, volunteer, volunteer, advocate, um, and spend money. But they can't be the trust for the money. Are they almost like a friends of like friends of Central Park kind of? It's more official than that. Yeah. So anytime you have a conservancy, anytime you have a land trust, mm -hmm. there are all these parameters right. um, that are required by federal and state. Mm -hmm. So would yeah. it would it be kind of a conflict of interest for a president of one to sue the city or something? And, and I think it was a horrific uh, conflict and be, of and be on our council at I the same time. I think it was a conflict of interest for the prior CEO to have that position after serving in the city also because of certain um, uh, knowledge. But that's just what I think. But if you want, um, I can get a better documentation of what those layers of of um, uh, authority are. Yeah, that'd be cool. I appreciate it. I do want to point out the person she was talking about was with the conservancy, the other person. The other person. Patrick Brown? Yeah, yeah, he was Her with the conservancy. With the 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 yeah. But it's interesting how it, they it, it does It does question inappropriateness, in, in my opinion, because yeah. um, you can't serve two, you know, you're on one and then suing the, you know, I, I think that's, yeah. Our yeah. He's representing the best interests yeah. of the residents of our city. Right. And then he's suing our city and trying to stop the very thing that he's right. doing. Right. Throws I millions know. of dollars into our city so that we can right. enjoy the things that we want to enjoy. He's also the one that recommended we develop 123 acres of that land. <laughs> <laughs> recall. So, yeah, that's good. I, I can just help you with what there is. But if you if you so desire, I can also go in and and get the backgrounds from each one of the conservancies and send it to you. If, uh, by the way, anybody here, um, uh, my cards on the way out. Uh, if you want to schedule an appointment, if something comes up, you might be shy and not want to ask a question in front of everybody. I'm always accessible uh, to sit down and do meetings. Some people don't like they show up just to hear and they don't maybe they're uncomfortable to speak. Uh, just know I'll be accessible and my cards are right there if you have any further questions or if you want to meet me in City Hall. Any other, any other questions? Because that's why we're here. If not, I will conclude by just saying I appreciate you taking the time to be here. Uh, we're, gonna do a, we're gonna work to do a better job at get more people, um, get it out there. Um, I wanna thank the city staff for all their hard work. Uh, and I want to thank my colleague, uh, Gracie Vandermark and Michael Gates. And, and again, each and every one of you, uh, just know um, we agree to disagree without being disagreeable. I think that we are missing some of that uh, in our society today. Um, uh, but just know that I'm working hard. I'm out in the community. I'm doing what I can to get your voices, take your voices and your concerns with me to City Hall. And with that, I really appreciate each and every one of you for taking the time to be here. And please visit the Art Center. Go through. You know, Kate, you know, the, direct them to go through and see some of the beautiful art here. Yeah, so thank you so much. Go ahead. Yes, they should be. Yes. Yes. Thank you for being here. Thank you.